Hello everyone and welcome to another high low game of Age of Empires. Today the Predator Mothership has dropped us off on Arabia to witness a game between Nikov the Blue Malian and Song Song the Red Spanish. Now while the players explored their immediate vicinity, heard their herdables and try to go up to feudal, let's take a look at their respective sieves and the matchup that we can expect to see as the game progresses. Malians, very tough nut to crack. Gold mines last longer, buildings are cheaper, two cool castle techs that allow their town centers to fire arrows even when they're not garrisoned, and a decent cavalry boost giving them plus five attack, which is great until you realize that they don't really have hussars, paladins, or elephants, but they do have heavy camels. So a plus five attack could come in very useful. Unique unit, Jibeto, super fun to watch, very quick, very light on its feet, low HP, but decent attack. Think throwing Axemen, as I always say, but faster, stronger, with a bit more range. Now, because they're classified as an infantry sieve, their barracks units do get plus one pierce armor as the ages progress, all the way to plus, through, uh, plus three in Imperial. Now, against the might of the Malians, we have the Spanish, who are always, always fun to watch. Builders work faster, blacksmith upgrades are cheaper, gunpowder units fire faster, They've got missionaries. They've got conquistadors. They are a civilization that can put the foot down on the gas pedal and just attack, attack, attack. Very cool to watch them. And they have a very fun uh, upgrade called Supremacy in Imperial Age that makes their villagers much stronger. Uh, adds 40 HP, 6 attack, and 2 armor. So basically, think Flemish Revolution where you're... Innocent civilians who at one point were gathering wood and stone and gold now all of a sudden become trained killing machines. We'll see if we're lucky enough to see Supremacy. It's not a very common uh, upgrade. Not too sure why, but we'll see how the game progresses. Now, let's take a look at the map that we're on. As I said, we've been dropped off at Arabia. I'm going to zoom out. Apologies to anyone on a smaller screen. I would say this is a medium rush distance between the two bases with a, a fairly wide open area here in the middle. So expect aggression just based on how the map flows. I expect so if red attacks blue, I expect Song Song to take this hill. If blue attacks into red, possibly from this angle to take advantage of this hill. But we'll see what the players have scouted. Red's base fairly open, has a nice wall off area here in the front. He can really close that off. The bushes and the stone do allow him to, to do a quick wall off on the east side, but the west side of his map, his base is completely open. Uh, his gold is here in the front. We'll see if that comes under any kind of attack or if he... Uh, it looks like he's already starting to wall off with the barracks here. I expect to see some kind of closed off uh, structures here, palisade walls, houses, etc. But if this gold comes under attack, he can always go to the gold in the back. So a nice safe secondary gold yeah and here we go here the palisade goes down walls off blue on the other hand uh sitting in a similar base he's got a, an easy wall off here to the northwest but the complete west side of his map with the exception of these two mineral deposits here he can build a closed off area here close off here close off here but the northeast is completely open so I expect, as I said, given the way the map is built with this huge open area in the front, in the middle, uh, with several hills to give players, you know, juicy locations to build castles, the way their bases are built, whether they'll stay open, whether they'll be closed off or, or funneled, we'll, we'll have to just wait and see. But I do expect aggression out of these players. As I say that, militias are beating the hell out of each other with clubs in Song Song's base. And let's see what Nikov has scouted. So Nikov has scouted the front of Song's base. Okay, hasn't scouted the sides just yet. I wonder if he's bringing back this scout cavalry to assist in this uh, military engagement here. Regardless, even without the scout cavalry, he should run away. Even with it, I mean, he should run away. He is outnumbered very badly here. Loses. Actually, not, not a terrible engage here. Let's just keep watching the, the, the bloodshed as the players try to micro their units to try to get any kind of advantage they can. But overall, a great trade here. Fairly equal. And what has Song seen? He, <laughs> he has not seen anything. So he is completely in the dark. 
His scout cavalry is retreating home. It is at 4 HP. A strong breeze could knock it over and kill it. So Song doesn't know if Nikov is to the left, to the bottom, or to the right of him. Uh, oh, random tiger joining in in the fight. Let's see if it can actually kill this. No, uh, sorry, I thought it was the blue militia with the with the shittier HP. But no, this militia should survive. A tiger aggressive pays the price. And here comes Song. He He's exploring. Went the right direction. Goes by a couple of tombstones. Always find these little details on this map. And he is very close here. Let's follow him on his journey. He sees a house. He sees the gold. He sees the miners. Okay, so he has a, a, a sense of where our blue Malian is. That being said, he hasn't really scouted the perimeter of the base. Doesn't know the weak points, the strong points. Sees a wood line, but no lumberjacks on it, which should suggest to him that they're somewhere in the back. And now he'll see them, of course, with the scout. At the same time, he is completely walling off his base. This is a very early wall off, in my opinion, which suggests to me that he is planning on going balls to the wall aggressive in feudal slash castle. And as I say that he is half a minute away from going up to feudal is our red Spanish player. Not to be outdone, our Malian player is just a minute behind him. So not the end of the world. In exchange for a minute delay, he is sitting, Nikov is sitting on 27 villagers to Song Song's 23. And we'll see what Song plans on doing once he reaches Feudal. He's there now. So far, just continuing to build villagers. Not a huge advantage, one minute. Yeah, okay, getting uh, the double bit axe. So he, he's going into, into the standard upgrades economic at the beginning of uh right when you hit feudal but he's got to be careful i mean this like i said a now now it's on one hp this scout cavalry so it is even weaker than before another militia comes on by he is getting an archer but in 15 seconds our blue malian is going to be up in feudal as well we'll see what he plans on doing he has made no effort to wall off his base uh i don't know if that means he also plans on being aggressive Plops down an archery range and a blacksmith. So he knows he's under attack. He knows he's playing against the Spanish. Uh, he knows that his opponent, once he gets the castle, is going to just pump out. I mean, the, nothing is 100% sure, but his opponent's likely to pump out conquistadors. Okay, starts walling off the eastern portion of his base. I like this little nook that Nikov is... Uh, walling off for himself it gives him plenty of room to expand but at the same time gives him an ability to defend this far to this point is fairly close to the bushes this is close to everything on the other hand song take a look i'm gonna zoom out what the hell is he gonna do if nikov attacks here in the south in the in the far west that being said he does not care he is plunking down stone walls okay he's planning on being aggressive no nobody just walls off an entire base like this, but is it open here? No, it's not open, but I would maybe add, uh, just in case, add a stone wall here. Why not? An abundance of caution, as they say. So, yeah, so he, he's being aggressive and feudal. This is a rinky dink mini army for now. They might get the palisade, but blue has already wisely funneled the rest of the, the map such that if Song wants to engage into his town center, he'll have to do it entering through this region, which, of course, puts him under fire from the town center. So he might get a structure here, a structure or two, but I don't expect any kind of major damage to be done by him. Song on the back of this, going up to 34 villagers, our blue Mali and Nikov. Happy to stay at 29 because he is going up to castle. Amazing. So he completely forewent any feudal military. Look at his top right of your screen. He has the scout cavalry that I believe he started the game with, which is chilling here in the <laughs> in the corner of the map with 5 HP. I mean, just delete it already uh, if you're not going to use it. It's just taking up supply space. Now he's in castle. Oh, to be a fly on the wall of, of, of Song's keyboard right now. I wonder what he thinks now that he sees his Malian opponent getting up to castle. While well, he invested so heavily in this feudal mini army. 
I mean, it, can it do something? It, this can kill a villager or two, but yeah, he's already building another town center. He is going to finish this very quick, 96, 7, 8, 9%. And yeah, here comes the knight. So this entire, yeah, two knights, this entire army by Song Song is completely dead. Complete waste of resources by him. Uh, always fun to see the strategies. You know, one player doubles down on aggression and feudal, doesn't really expand his resources, dumps them all into army. Another player just says, you know what? I know I'm playing against the Spanish. I know the second you get to castle, you are going to just flood me with conquistadors, I suspect. Um, and basically says, I'm going to reach castle before you. And when I do, I'm going to plop down a whole bunch of town centers and start producing knights. He's now sitting on the same two knights we saw earlier with a total kill count of seven. Okay, expanding his gold. Like I said, the Malians, their gold lasts 30% longer. So, yeah, I always, always, always go for gold as the Malian just because it's such a juicy resource, that extra bonus, civ bonus that you get. But our Spanish player is two minutes away from getting to castle himself. Now, Nikov's fast castle, by now he must realize that his opponent did not go fast castle, right? There's no castle placement near his wall. He doesn't see conquistadors. Uh, obviously, he doesn't hear the rattling sound, the hissing sound it makes when it goes up. And the fact that his opponent's score is 270, 300 points below him probably tells him that Song is going up to castle as I speak at the very moment. So what has Nikov done to take advantage of the several minutes that he's had in castle? He's plopped down two town centers. He's going up to 45 villagers to Song's 40. Or rather, 39, because one is stuck behind the uh, uh, going up uh, research in the town center. Good wall off here. But look, take a look at the top of your screen. Song has eight villagers on stone. When he hits castle in 15 seconds, I suspect we're going to see a, a, a small move out from him. Where is his stone? Here it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, eight villagers. So we're going to see a, a move out. He's getting bloodlines. His cavalry are going to be tanky. Nikov on the, uh, on the back of this has gone up to 54 villagers. A monastery. Okay. Archery range. Another archery range. Okay, so he's going to go ranged units against what he suspects. Okay, but Song Song is not moving out. He's building a defensive castle. Let's see what that's for. I mean, obviously for conquistadors, right? I just meant what what is it for in terms of strategic placement? There's high ground here that's problematic if a treb can get there. Assuming the treb can reach the castle. For now, these two knights just being annoying. Neither player really trying to engage into the other at the moment. Yeah, we got the second the castle finishes, the first conquistador gets researched. Okay. I like Nikov's uh, out-of-the-box kind of... I don't want to call it a wall-off, but like these, these layered defenses that he's putting down. So if he's attacked from the west, it'll take uh, Song Song a bit of time to just demolish these structures. He doesn't have any siege. Even with conks, I mean, they're powerful, but they'll take a while. That gives him an opportunity to retreat back to, to his other line of defense. I mean, none of these defensive structures, palisade walls, houses, uh, archery rangers are very strong. None of them are, you know, <laughs> stone walls. But they'll do the job. They'll slow him down. Okay, second town center going down next to the stone. Okay, so he's planning. He's only got six on stone now. Is he planning to doing it on uh, putting on offensive castle? I mean, maybe he, maybe he heard me say he's going to get aggressive and says, Isaac, uh, you are completely wrong. Is he expecting the Malian player to be aggressive? Another town center plop near the goal. I love this placement. This is a fantastic placement. You just got to make sure to have vision of this high ground because you don't want to give this high ground up to your opponent, especially with gold here. Scarce resource on in, in Age of Empires. Okay, Conquistadors coming in. Like I said, this first line of defense on the west Gave Nikov the ability to run away back to his base. But yeah, what's he going to do here? These Kongs can knock down this palisade wall very quick. For now, they're interested in sniping villagers. They already have three kills. Oh man, this villager. Why? 
How did he not die? Taking six volleys from Conquistadors. What's their base accuracy? 65. Horrible. Horrible base accuracy. So 35% of the time they miss. Oy. Maybe that's how he survives. Okay. Uh, more red streaming down the map. Finally, a siege workshop. As I said, he, he's got to knock these structures down somehow. Another town center going down. I also like the placement of this one. Our Malian is sitting at 83 villagers going up to 86. So this is a risk I think that Nikov is taking. He sees the conquistadors, but he also sees the score. They're both in castle. He's sitting at a 600 point advantage. I suspect he thinks... He's in a safer position than he really is, but the conks are here. He's going up to eight. He's already got a mangonel. He's getting a second one. And I uh, honestly, I still expect a cast castle drop because now Song Song has 10 villagers, 11 villagers on stone. And these conks are going to keep Blue busy. They're going to keep him annoyed. He's building his own siege workshop. He hasn't seen this one. No, he has not. So he wants to deal with these conquistadors, not with skirmishers. I mean, skirmishers are always good trash units to ch exchange with super expensive unique units, but they're not going to kill these conks as fast as you think. Especially when it's 11 to 7. I mean, that's not enough of an advantage. And uh, here we go, finally. Okay. Glad to know I'm not losing my game sense. Very front castle going down here. Unfortunately for Song Song... This wood line is completely empty. There's nothing here. Nobody is cutting any wood here. So perhaps could have been better served somewhere else. I also don't like that it's right next to the wood pile. Uh, if you watch my videos, you know I hate putting castles. Or I hate when castles are put right next to a wood line. It gives no room here. If our Malian player comes with a couple of trebs here, this part of the map, there's nothing red can do because red is... I mean, he can put them to the left, he can put them to the right, but he can't put them in front. That being said, let's see if we even get that far. For now, the castle attacking a house, not the best use of the castle, but it's got only three houses in range. That being said, he's got Mangonels attacking, Conquistador still exploring or doing something. Getting zoned out quite well by these elite skirmishers. Oh my god, this scout cavalry... I mean, was he healed, or is this a new one that he built? He's got two. In any event, who cares about scout cavalry? Now Nikov is coming in with his priest, his priest, his monk, his own mangonel. Very ballsy outpost attempt here. Okay, town watch completed for our Spanish player. So he's going to see a lot of Nikov's base. And now Nikov is under siege. Literally under siege. Three mangonels knocking on the front door of his base. Another castle going down. I mean, I love the placement in terms of the hills on the high ground. But what's the point of this castle? Is he expecting a run by? He's seen this portion of the base. I mean, perhaps it would have been better served down here. In any event, another castle means double the conch production. Or actually not double because he's got going from two to three. So 50% more conch production. And so far, yeah, the game is taking a very kind of passive pace, even though both players are sitting on decent army supplies. I mean, 10 conquistadors here. Oh, my goodness. 24 elite skirmishers. So our blue Malian is sitting on 30 army supply. He's splitting up his... Uh, he set a nice little trap for our red Spanish player. Fantastic play here by Nikov. Gets two, three conquistadors, four conquistadors for his trouble. What a brilliant play splitting off the elite skirmishers in the hopes that Song Song goes north here as opposed to continuing west as he's doing now. Fantastic play, fantastic game sense. Manages to pick off a huge number of these. 40% of this army is gone, and now we're seeing another potential skirmish engagement here. Okay? Song Song sees it, immediately micros his conks. Oh, they're so inaccurate, for God's sakes. It's still, yeah, it's still 65. But he's got to be careful. These are fast. They're mobile. They'll outrun the skirmishers, but not when he splits them up perfectly. Okay, gets a fifth one for his trouble. 
Two of these are basically dead. Six, seven. Okay, and I think Song Song is going to run back to his base. I, I, I don't see him really microing these or trying to do anything more with them. I think he's probably traumatized. I don't think he wants to run into five elite skirmishers right now. Although, with the Mangonel support, maybe he does. Maybe he wants to keep them standing for long enough so that the Mangonels can get their shots off. A castle going down here. Okay. I don't know if Song Song, who is going up to Imperial two minutes after our Blue Malian player is going to Imperial, I don't know if he's expecting cavalry counterattacks or some kind of raiding by our Blue Malian, but he is building an infrastructure that looks like he's planning on going into late game and long game. Uh, we'll see if it pans out or whether he would have been better served with more forward castles. Finally, a castle going down for our Malian player who's getting heavy camels amazing he's getting chemistry hand cart so i expect our blue malian who right now is sitting on 131 villagers going up to 136 to literally explode onto the map in the next two or three minutes the upgrades that he's getting the civilian population that exists to support his military is massive the infrastructure here is amazing Let's look at what he's working with in terms of building. He's got two archery ranges, not great. Plopping down fork stables and three siege workshops. Okay, so four stables. I see the camels here in 24 seconds. They're going to get upgraded to heavy camels. He's out on the map, but our red Spanish is no easy target. I mean, these conks are tanky. 75 HP, attack on a 16, three armor for both melee and pierce. And now these camels get their cape and become heavy camels. Let's see if he researches the plus five attack that'll just make them bonkers to deal with for our Spanish player. But our Spanish player, yeah, I, I wanted to call this a soft contain, right? This is not exactly a hard contain. There's not a lot of pressure being put on our blue Mali, and he's got a bombard cannon out that's tickling away at this castle but to the left of the castle we've got a whole bunch of infrastructure here five barracks or, or four excluding the one at the top left a stable for some reason even though he doesn't have a single cavalry unit except the conks from the castle and a siege workshop so i would very much call this a soft contain he has put a tiny bit of pressure onto our blue malian but definitely not enough to keep our malian condensed into a corner compressed into a corner okay perfect timing to move these units out always annoying when you group fast units with slow units and then they move at the speed of the slow unit <laughs> yeah these castles will will wreck these conquistadors if he's not careful so the contain is gone and now red is left with an expansion here in the middle of the map that's completely undefended except for a castle that doesn't have any of his own structures in its range and is now under attack by a trebuchet and a two bombard cannons and let's see how he responds i mean we're 40 minutes into the game he's got two mangonels himself two trebs the field of battle so far has claimed one halberdier oh my god that scout cavalry is the luckiest scout cavalry finally dies to a hal but my god he took two volleys from 12 conquistadors and still didn't die that just shows you how powerful but inaccurate they are what a trade-off everything in this game is a massive trade-off and what is our blue player doing behind this building a castle to the south okay i like the placement of the castle probably i would have preferred onto this hill rather than there but i am not second guessing any player oh god he is i mean the movement of these conquistadors is great but he's not getting the damage he needs to get done here nikov is just exploding both players are supply capped at 200 supply 200 population and let's look at their armies i mean what do we have here two trebs 19 conks and 21 halbs against eight seven camels and 23 elite skirmishers so army advantage very much in my opinion here for our spanish player i wonder why he's being so coy about engaging here like these halbs are going to shred through these camels these camels are weak as shit when it comes to fighting halbs but he goes around the halbs 
and they're going to attack the Kongs. The Kongs, like I said, the, the skirmishers are great because you're trading trash units for expensive, unique units, but they don't kill Kongs as fast as you'd think they do. But with camel support, different story. Okay, now he's raiding with the camels here. As I was talking, Light Cav have entered and penetrated Red's base, a random camel here. But my god, are they slow to kill. Raiding, raiding, raiding. Our red Spanish player has been knocked down to 123 villagers, 13 of which are idle. As I said, I, I wasn't too sure about the placement of this castle, but I did say I like the hill, because there's no high ground around here except to the left. And you know the blue Malian's not going to go that way. Oh no, loses a mangonel, loses two mangonels. Oh, he's going to lose these camels too. He's got to be careful here. He has a superior army, but in terms of firepower, but they are, they, yeah, he's being countered. But as I was saying, this castle on the high ground, look how little damage it takes from these trebs. 25% less damage. And now he's coming with four trebs of his own, some of which are on high ground. I mean, is this, is this one technically on high ground? Oh God, this poor, poor hand cannoneer, literally just born, immediately dies to a giant ball of fire. Another aggressive castle here by Nikov. Yeah, the players are carving up the map. This is post-World War II Europe. The Spanish and the Malians are carving up the map to see who gets what. And for now, our Spanish player is the one protruding into the map. Our blue Malian, though not to be outdone, slowly making his way around the edge. But he is going to run full on into this Spanish castle that was built here 10, 15 minutes ago. Army supply is very similar. Okay, we're going man-at-arms for our Spanish player. Did I see a Bombard Cannon? Yeah, I see a <laughs> I see a sneaky Bombard Cannon here. How many does Blue have left? Blue has one Bombard Cannon left, so the other one must have gotten sniped. Yeah, these conks are just ripping through Blue's army with the castle to protect, but he's lost all his trebs. Except one, which is now in the back at half HP. It's useless. Okay, I gotta be careful with this, uh... Mango. I wonder why he went into Man at Arms. Is it just by virtue of the resources that he has? Or is this... Are we gonna see some kind of cool new... Spanish conk hal Man at Arm Treb play? Oh, sneaky, sneaky blue going to the complete western portion of the map. Look, nothing around here. No one for days and days. No one to see what he's about to produce out of these stables. They're going to catch a priest if he's paying attention. Okay, are you paying attention? He is not. Priest survives, gets a relic, makes his way back. Let's see if he notices. He being our uh, blue Malian, who is now with one treb attacking this Spanish castle. Doesn't look like either player has the height advantage or the elevation advantage. Our Spanish player attacking these archery rangers. Good move. I mean, you see that your opponent is going into, into hand cannons. So why not get rid of the buildings that build hand cannons? But at the same time, our Malian is everywhere. He's in the north. He's in the east. He is now in the west, stopping this town center from going up. And oh my god, what a move here. 34 elite skirmishers have abandoned their post in the front have made their way to the west and let's see what happens when song song sees that all of a sudden instead of having to deal with five or six light cav he has to deal with 34 skirmishers i mean look this is a brilliant play because when you produce these light calves to raid the natural counter even though it's slow as shit is the halberdier and these elite skirmishers are just gonna demolish halberdiers look they they can't even make it to the skirmishers before the skirmishers attack so blue fantastic raiding here unfortunately though he is leaving the front of his base completely undefended bombard cannon going down i think yes and these halves are weak but there's so many of them we're looking at 15 there were probably another 10 before he's gonna get one treb we'll definitely not get another treb these hand cannons are shredding through these halberdiers now we've got two-handed swordsmen on the field getting attack upgrades for them but okay i was gonna say but what is he going to do to fight off 
Okay, so he brought over 25 two-handed swordsmen. I mean, look at the mini-map at the bottom of your screen. Look at how it's lighting up, and it's almost exclusively lighting up in Song Song's base. So he's being annoying here. He's being annoying here. He's being annoying here. He's attacking this castle here. He still has this treb up completely defended by his own castle. Nothing that Song Song has here can attack into the treb. He's got a treb here. Song Song doesn't have any trebs. He's got one bombard cannon. Like that bombard cannon can potentially knock this treb down if Nikov isn't paying attention. But what are the odds of that? And yeah, I mean, brilliant move here by Nikov to go for the reach around, the wrap around, the backstab with those 34 elite skirmishers. Only five have died so far. I don't know, you know, Song Song decided to GG. I think he saw, I mean, look at what we see. 124 villagers for our Malian player, 78 for Song Song. He doesn't know that the Malian player is sitting at such a huge advantage, but he just lost a huge chunk. Look at these elite skirmishers, 54 kills, 19 of which are villagers. This wood line is exposed. So this is seven more villagers that are done. What does he have here? Two more villagers. So now we're up to nine villagers that are done. 10 villagers here, so he knows he's about to get knocked on his ass economically. I think the wise move to GG. And let's, uh, let me open this menu and look at the APM. Decent APMs, 241 peak APM by Song Song. That is crazy. That is fantastic micro here. 144 is not bad either, but 241 is fantastic. Units killed, 300 for Nikov. 185 for Song Song. Overall, a fantastic game. I mean, look at the map exploding with action. But yeah, I mean, Song Song, his soft contain in the beginning, he with the, when he put the castle here, didn't really accomplish much. It was a good positioning, I think. He thought it was a good positioning. I disagreed just by virtue of the fact that it was right next to the wood line. But all it had in its sight was three houses. So it did almost no damage. That's why I think he built these kind of backup castles here and here. This one came first. But yeah, Nikov just stretched Song Song way too, way too thin. By the time he got rid of all of this military here, 29 skirmishers, 3 light cav. Plus, you know there's more in production. There's, oh my god. Take a look at the top right of your screen. Our blue Malian Nikov is producing 56 light cavalry units at once. Out of, I'm going to zoom out. Apologies to anyone on a, on, a, on a smaller screen, but I need to zoom out here. 15 stables. So Nikov was getting ready, plus he shifted his villagers, 38 into food. He was a, he was getting ready to swamp Song Song, and I think Song Song may, may have kind of gotten a sense of that. Uh, you know, you don't play thousands and thousands of games and have an ELO of 25, 44 without having a good game sense. By the time Song Song replenished these bases, these farms with villagers, he would have no food left for army. So I think he wisely GG to live to fight another day. Great game, very fast paced. I think our Malian player played it perfectly by going to fast castle and then fast imperial, or at least faster than our Spanish player. Never go, never put yourself in a position to be behind the Spanish player when it comes to going up to ages because before you know it 10 conquistadors show up at your base they are wildly inaccurate they do if they miss they do not you know they, they miss a third of the time let, let me put it like that but when they don't my god do they pack a punch these aren't a lead and they still hit it hit on a 16 he was decimating the resource line here the farmers of nikov but nikov i don't think nikov cared I mean, look how much room he has to expand everywhere else. He's got plenty of room here for farms if he wanted them. These villagers were relocating to get away from these conquistadors. But fantastic play here by Nikov. Two brilliant moves that he made. Number one, going up to castle and imperial faster than your opponent. Number two, abandoning, rolling the dice, taking the risk, abandoning the frontal attack, going all the way around to, blue, uh, to red's base, and supporting his light cav production with these elite skirmishers. 
I mean, they ca could have probably, with the light cav, dealt with these two-handed swordsmen. Probably. I, I don't want to speculate 34 against 26. Uh, with light cav support, maybe. With, with uh, you know, advantage of the high ground, maybe. But Song Song was definitely here defending the western portion of his base, but too little too late. As I said, he, he just fell behind way too much, and good decision by him to GG, I think. Like I said, live to fight another day. And overall, a very fun game by both players. Good decision-making by both. Love the decision-making by Nikov. And I hope everyone enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.